Well, Canada is home to sprawling forests, crystal clear lakes, and some of the most beautiful nature scenes on Earth. But some experts say enjoy all that while it lasts because our ecosystems are increasingly under threat and we might be running out of time to save them. Here to highlight some of the most at-risk areas in our country is Professor of Environmental Sciences at the University of Guelph, Peter Kevin. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Some of these were familiar to me. Some of these were new. Let's start with the, Carolina for the Carolinian forest ecosystem. That includes the savannas, wetlands, tall grass prairies, other kinds of rare ecosystems. This is how big it used to be. Here's what it looks like. We're showing our viewers a comparison map, uh, Peter. Only 15% of that actually remains. So let us know what happened. How did we lose all this ground? And what impact does it have on local wildlife? Well, the, the, the zone called uh, Carolinian Canada is really an extension of the Carolinian forests or the Appalachian forests of, uh, that are to the south in the United States and uh, certainly along the shore of Lake Erie. The, uh, it's it's a, a plain, really, of extremely fertile land that's been left over since the Ice Age and has been used by people for agricultural purposes for a very long time. And uh, after the settlement of uh, Europeans into uh, that part of Canada, of course, a lot of the forest was cut down and uh, changed into agricultural land. So the main loss of Carolinian forest has been through intensive agri uh, agricultural lands. There are patches of it left, as you've mentioned, and uh, those contain a lot of relic species, uh, species of trees. Uh, particularly, and uh, and uh, herbaceous plants that still grow in the patches of Carolinian forest, and those are generally speaking under a fair amount of protection. I want to take our viewers through. We've got five of them to get through. Uh, let's go up north. We've got the Beaufort Sea. This is prime hunting ground for polar bears, but they've taken a significant hit over the years. Their populations have 40% of that population disappearing since the beginning of the 21st century. Here's a look at, at the map, but what's going on? What's happening? Well, the, the, the Beaufort Sea is changing, and certainly part of it is ice cover and uh, the, the changes in climate which have brought about the, um, the decline in the amount of ice on the sea. And, uh, and the ice on the sea is important polar bear habitat because that's where they go to see, uh, for hunting seals. And so uh, with the reduction in ice cover, there's the reduction of seal habitat in that respect and uh, greater difficulty for the polar bears to get around. The Beaufort Sea has, uh, has been a, a hot spot for polar bear declines. But if one goes to Western Hudson Bay, one finds that, in fact, the polar bear population there is quite healthy. And it's interesting to sort of try to surmise or, or guess at what might the differences be between the Beaufort Sea and uh, Hudson Bay and why the Hudson Bay population is doing quite well and the Beaufort Sea population is not. It's interesting to, to make that comparison. The boreal forests are on the front lines in the fight against climate change. I mean, the numbers here are incredible. They hold 12% of the world's land-based carbon stock. They remove 113 million metric tons of carbon dioxide every year. But they're also the victims of climate change. So how threatened are they? Well, the boreal forests are, uh, are, are, seem to be shrinking um, in as much as they're, they're moving north as climate change is continuing, there's no doubt of that. And the southern border is moving north and the northern border is moving north. And in the meantime, much of the interior part of the boreal forest tends to be drying out as a result of continued climate change and changes in rainfall patterns. A lot of the boreal forest has been fairly intensively logged. And so we've lost patches there, and regeneration of the boreal forest trees has not kept a pace of some of the areas of intensive logging. Uh, the logging industry, the timber industry, has made some changes in its policy as to how to deal with that. So uh, perhaps we're looking at some management, forestry management practices that uh, would help. But of course, with the drying becomes in increased forest fires and the increased forest fires are taking out uh, forest as well. And uh, the result is a sort of shrinking and slowing of the growth of the forest in regeneration. So those whole co set of combinations, there aren't very many people 
by comparison with southern Canada living in the boreal forest, but um, they are losing um, their livelihoods as well as uh, the forest shrinks, its productivity goes down, and uh, the wildlife and fish resources also decline. Peter, the last one I want to touch on is one that I had not heard of, uh, about before. This is along the east coast. There are forested wetlands and marshes that are under threat. Some experts are even worried about a place that is sometimes called the Moose Sex Corridor. Can you tell us more about that? Well, the Moose Sex Corridor on the, uh, on the uh, southeastern side um, I'm sorry, the northeastern side is, is relatively high ground by comparison with the side, the southwestern side, which borders on the Bay of Fundy. The Isthmus of Ch Chignecto is a low-lying area in general, and uh, the Tantaramar marshes, which are in the eastern side of, uh, of that area, are a large uh, swath of... Um, uh, sort of sem somewhat flooded areas, a lot of uh, the tides are great, they s swirl in there. And uh, they were changed in the 1880s and 1840s uh, to uh, pasture lands, particularly by diking and draining for agricultural purposes. So there's a fair amount of heavy agriculture or intensive agriculture in that area. And that is causing a blockage then for the moose that would normally have moved between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia unimpeded by, by habitat uh, uh, fragmentation. And that is the concern that the moose in New Brunswick and the moose in Nova Scotia, which comprised a population of moose, uh, are now being sort of forced into two populations. So the idea of the uh, sex corridor is to provide a way in which the moose can move fairly freely between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Peter, you have taken us coast to coast to coast, taking a look at our valuable ecosystems, the ones that are most under threat. Thanks for your time this morning. Well, you're more than welcome. I'm only happy to uh, visit a few places that I have known from my own experiences throughout Canada as a, as a practicing ecologist.